Tonight, uh, we're going to speak about uh, exterior stain on a deck house. We also have a guest speaker, uh, Bryant Mahoney. He is a business development manager with PPG Architectural Coatings. What question I get asked the most is what to use. And it's hard for me to say exactly what to use because I don't know what was used in your house for some houses are 50, 60 years old, all the way up until just you know a year or two old. And to, to not know what was used prior, it's difficult to recommend a specific product. A lot of people ask, why, why doesn't my stain last longer? Um, stain goes on the house, and depending on the elevation, depending on how much sun and, or how much shade it sees, if, it's, if there's too much shade, the, the sun and air does not evaporate the moisture on your house and it could break down the stain just as quickly if it sees a ton of, of UV rays. Um, the enemy of, of stain is your elements, wind, rain, and sun. UV rays, it'll break down your stain, usually in about, uh, depending on what's used, two to three years. On your deck, usually it's one to two years, depending on what's used, because it sees a lot of foot traffic. Uh, windows, doors, and siding, every two to three years. Again, it depends on how much sun and elevation sees, or how much shade it sees. If your cedar or mahogany is gray, it's way overdue for stain, and your, your house is actually getting damaged. Your windows, doors, sliders, and siding is letting in and absorbing moisture, expanding and contracting. With windows and doors, there are joints that are opening and closing. Um, so that's going to create issues with your doors and sliders not only, yeah, you need to seal it, but it may break down the slider, you'll have a leak. Then instead of having to seal it, you may need to replace the entire window unit, slider unit, or door. Color matching is very difficult. Um, just over the last five years alone, they've completely changed the way they make up the chemical makeup of paints and stains to lower VOCs, especially on the interior. The interior, I get a lot of questions on how do I color match what I used in 1972. I can tell you what was used in 1972 on your beams, your ceiling, and your, your windows. But it doesn't mean you can get that exact same stain today. Even if you could, the sun, your heating elements, the, you know, the, the oil or, or wood burning, can discolor your stain over 30, 20, 30, 40 years. You can use the exact same product next to it, and it may look slightly different in color. All right? So, I would go to an inconspicuous area of your house and sand a little bit and find a few different stains, maybe even custom mix them yourself to try to find something that works. Once you do, write that down and put it in a safe because it's going to be very difficult to, to reproduce in the future. Mill glaze, prepping, prepping wood for stain. When a piece of wood, whether it's um, beams, whether it's decking, whether it's uh, a window or door, you do need to prep that material to receive stain. Mill glaze is when the blade spins so fast that it seals the cells of the wood. When that happens, you try to stain it, the stain isn't going to penetrate. Within a few years, maybe even a few weeks, that stain is gonna peel right off and immediately there's gonna be damage happening almost right away. So what you wanna do, especially on decking, um, smooth surfaces, you wanna sand with about an 80 grit paper. That'll, that'll uh, take off the, the mill glaze and allow stain to penetrate the wood a little bit better. That's it for me. Let's hear from Bryant. Today, uh, well, first place, um, I've been the wood care specialist for PPG and Axon Nobel for 15 years. One of the things I've learned over the last few years is that all wood finishes give wood a desired appearance, protection for the surface, and the ability to be cleaning that surface. Offering protection and providing a cleanable surface are the most important features you should be looking at. A desired appearance without protection and the ability to clean that is short-lived. The longevity of a finish is often related to the specification and installation. The overall performance of the finish is a reflection on the quality of the job. The lifespan of a finish is the signature of the project. What I'm leading to is, in most cases, maintenance. If you give up on that ability and keep up maintenance, the coating will eventually erode down to bare wood. And in some places, people don't clean it 
or put on a maintenance coat before it's too late. The performance of a finish depends on choosing the appropriate finish. Considerations of a finish should include the environment and the climate. Other factors include sufficient service preparation, application, <coughs> moisture content, and routine maintenance again. In general, all wood is composed of three components. They are cellulose, hemicellulose, and something called lignin. Approximately 20 to 30 percent of all wood is made up of lignin. Cellulose and hem hemicellulose are considered the building blocks or bricks. Every piece of wood is combined with the hemicellulose, cellulose, throughout the whole structure. The lignin is the glue that holds this together. If left unprotected, the UV rays will begin to break down the lignin and eventually you'll get loose wood fibers on top. An example of that piece of unprotected wood that has faced the UV rays, dirt, snow, rain, and water, and you see the great wood cell fibers. What's happening is the lignans begin to dry up, and what you're left is loose cellulose, excuse me, hemicellulose and cellulose fibers. This destruction is approximately skin deep. By cleaning it and sanding it, I brought the wood back to normal, or to new and fresh. There is a lot of labor involved in this, but you should never wait this far. So if left exposed, the UV, the UV rays will break down the lignin. At first, this process is not visible, but it will affect the chemistry of the wood on the surface. You'll begin to see changes in color, and the hemicellulose and cellulose fibers become loose on the surface. Lignin damage can happen within one week on a horizontal surface and three to four on a vertical surface. So if you're driving down the street, you see a new home being built, the last thing or second last thing they do is probably paint the home. And they've left it up for six months, even longer. That grain, maybe not to this extent, but is also already happening. They hire a contractor, he washes the home, puts up a coating, and it doesn't last as long. If you're sanding the surface, you're actually pushing the surface dirt mildew into the wood. Mildew is actually a plant, and it has roots. When people wash or bleach TSP and water to remove that, they're actually removing the mildew on the surface. It's never, the cleaning chemicals do not attack the roots. It's difficult, almost impossible, to kill that root system. Once you put a coating back on that piece of wood, in most cases, that mildew will continue to grow and come up. You won't see it, and you'll swear you washed it. And uh, I come up to people's homes, they want to know what happened, and they say, I swear I washed it. And I say, I know you did, but you didn't kill the root system. And the solution we use recommend one quart of bleach, three quarts of water, and a little bit of TSP. We recommend you can use a bucket, a scrub brush. You can spray, put the spray solution in a canister and pump spray it on. You want to soak that piece of wood as much as possible to get those cleaning agents into the wood. What I always recommend is putting it on and then using a scrub brush. We have a customer that uh, actually couldn't make it tonight and they were asking about um, pressure washing or blasting. The pressure washer should be used for a thorough cleaning. We recommend approximately 1,000 to 2,000 PSI. 1,000 is plenty. You cannot use a garden hose because that's about 60 to 90 pounds of pressure coming out. The surface is irregular and there's dirt inside here. The pressure will blow it out of there. A garden hose is not going to blow that out. Another bad picture, I'm sorry. So the pressure washer is a thorough cleaning rinse to remove that surface dirt as well as the solution, cleaning solution. Now if you wanted to use the blasting compounds like a walnut blast, they do a great job, but you still have to clean first because it has a high amount of pressure, it would still push in the surface dirt and mildew. The cob blasting removes the coating that's on there, but at the same time, it's opening up the pores of the wood. So the first time I did my deck or I painted my home, I may have used four gallons to do it one side of the house. If I use the corn blasting or the bleed bag, or it's definitely corn blasting, 
it would open up the wood fibers so much you would use probably seven or eight gallons on that one side because the, the, it, the wood is so porous it's absorbing it right in which would also show you a deeper and a richer color than the original. One thing that, to add to that, with deck houses you want to be careful with either uh, pressure washing or blasting because houses settle and if originally um, in between the wall and your rafters and your 3x6 decking, if you look in between, there's a little V-groove. If they didn't use a foam tape between there, you're spraying water directly into the house or your, your um, uh, walnut shells or whatever it is, you're spraying it into the house. So if someone's ever doing that, a contractor, make sure they have someone on the ins inside as well or you can follow them around the inside to make sure they're not spraying, washing the inside of your house as well. Just be cautious because I've heard some horror stories. Here's my building blocks. Um, every piece of wood, if it's not properly prepared, the, coat, the first coat you put on sits on the surface. If it sits on the surface, you're putting on a small amount. If you do the surface preparation, well, the picture you can see, the surface preparation, you're creating profiles. Sanding creates profiles. And what that becomes is peaks and valleys. So you put on the first coat of blue, which is the primer. The primer goes into the peaks and valleys and seals the top. You apply the second coat, which is shown here in a purple color. Then you apply the third coat. This is the same product I'm just showing you. It weathers down to the second coat. You reapply the third coat to build it back up. Over three, four, or five years, it weathers back down to the second coat. You wash it. You apply the maintenance coat again to build it back up. Sometimes it'll weather down to the second coat or first coat. And what happens, people clean it and apply one coat. After applying that one coat, it's only building it back up. You don't have the proper mill thickness to carry out the same lifespan that the, that originally had. Remember, all sides of the home weather differently. So there might be two sides of your house that is weathered down to one coat. There may be one side of the house that gets beat by the sun constantly. In actuality, it's weathered down to that one coat. And that one side may need two coats of application. How do you tell? With the second log and siding and uh, CTOL 1 and CTOL 2, 3 plus system, it's when that sheen begins to dull down. We have a nice satin finish, and as, as it ages, we talked about the product erodes, and it erodes down to that second coat. First thing it loses is the sheen. What I recommend when you hire a contractor or do your own work in your home is to get a piece of wood, apply the same system to that sample piece of wood. Every year, you blow out that sample, and you match up to see if the sheen is dulled down so much that you believe it needs another coat. Many times people have asked me, what's the best thing? I'm going to build my beautiful house. I want it to last forever. What should I use? Um, and what's going to last the longest? Well, the worst, well, not the worst, but the first thing that's going to burn up is a clear. The second thing that's better than a clear is a translucent finish. And as you climb up the ladder, the next one would be a semi-transparent and then a solid color. The clears, what they do is they're protecting it from water as well as they're absorbing UV. A translucent will absorb the UV, protect it from water, and it actually, that color it has, acts as a sunscreen. But in the one coat system, it naturally fades away, that, that system. In a multiple coat system like log and siding and door and window, it erodes down to two coats, you build it back up. The next thing is a semi-transparent. The first one is a translucent, they're synthetic pigments. The pigments are as clear as glass. It's just like wearing a pair of sunglasses. The semi-transparent board, the pigments are clay. They're from the ground. So what they do is they muddy the wood, depending on how heavy you put it on. They would, they would begin to hide the grain of the surface. So a translucent synthetic pigments. The one coat system is a product that naturally fades away. You're cleaning the surface before you put the first coat on with the, with the log and siding or CTOL 1 and CTOL 2, 3 plus, but you're never putting on that film thickness. So what you're doing is you're allowing that one coat, we'll call it SRD or anybody else's single coat system to just naturally weather away. Coatings never weather away naturally, they never weather away completely, you'll always have patches. 
Oh, so that's really hard. What you would have to do to clean off those one coat systems, anybody's one coat system, is to completely remove that product from that deck or home in order to get an even, clean, uniform look after you reapply it. A lot of people won't do that. So they, ended up, they end up putting a new coat over areas that still have a previous coat. And what you end up getting is flashy and different colors. We have a two coat system of mahogany. It's called deck finish. And it's the same situation where you put on one coat, it acts as the prime coat. You put the second coat on, it becomes a film forming finish with that satin look. And on mahogany, you must wash it and put on another coat if it has a high amount of um, UV. One of the things I created, because I'm a smart guy, is something called the WAUV scale. And I rated it zero to three. So if you paint a deck and it has no weather, it has no abrasion resistance from walking traffic, and it has no UV hitting it, you're probably going to get a lifetime <laughs> out of that deck. But if you have a deck that receives a small amount of weather, small amount of abrasion, and a lot of UV, it's probably going to last you two years. If you have the same deck, but it has receives more weather, rain, sleet, and snow, same amount of abrasion resistance, low traffic areas, but a tremendous amount of UV, you could get just 12 months out of that coating. So out of that 12 months, if you use the one coat system, you're removing everything that's on there and reapplying it. If it's the two coat system, and it's, especially in mahogany, it's weathered down to that one coat because of the weather, the abrasion, and the UV, you're just washing it and brushing on another coat.